This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at the Droid Razor HD on Verizon. As you might guess, this is the first HD Razor available on Verizon, but it's about the same size as last year's Razor, which is a good thing. It doesn't get any more huge. 4.7 inch display, 720 by 1280 pixels, Super AMOLED, Qualcomm S4 CPU, dual core 1.5 gigahertz, pretty much the de facto standard on Android smartphones these days. Only the LG Optimus G beats it in terms of cores for a US phone, but still. Very nice looking phone. Gorilla Glass on the front. Kevlar on the back for ruggedness, but a soft touch. Looks a little bit more like carbon fiber. Definitely a nice phone. We're going to look at it now. The Motorola Droid Razor HD is going to be available on November 18th for $199 with contract on Verizon Wireless. And it's got a 4.7 inch Super AMOLED display running at 1280x720p, hence the HD designation for the name. Miraculously though, Motorola managed to keep it about the same size as the original Razor that came out last year. And show you for comparison. So here they are side by side. Really you're looking at an identical footprint there if we put one on top of the other. Same size. Now the original Razer was not a small phone despite the fact that it had a 4.3 inch display which isn't that huge. So that doesn't mean the Razer HD is a teeny phone but it does mean that you're not looking at anything bigger in your pocket. And from the side view you can see similar thickness and we've finally lost that camera hump here on the HD model. Now as we take a look around the phone, nice metal ring here, uh, subdued, not glossy. Volume controls right here, metal, metal also for the power button, which has a texture on so you can really feel it's a little bit rough, you know what you've got your finger on. Headphone jack up here. On this side we have HDMI and micro USB. It's nice to still have that HDMI port for those of you who like to plug this into a TV or a monitor, you don't have to fiddle with MHL adapters and things like that. And if you notice here, there's a little door with a little pokey hole there, sort of like the iPhone uses. And if you poke in there, you can get the micro SIM card out that Verizon uses for the LTE portion of their service. And there's also a micro SD card slot in there. So it's great to have storage expansion. Obviously, that is not the most convenient way, though. You're not going to be probably popping this open and carrying a paper clip with you all the time just to get that card out. You're probably just going to plug this into USB in your computer to access, access the contents of your card. Nothing on the bottom except for some industrial teeny torque screws that are holding the casing together. And the real neatness comes on the back. Here we have Kevlar, which Motorola has been using, but this is a real soft touch finish. It's really nice to touch and it looks pretty cool too. It really does look more like carbon fiber or something like that for those of you who are car enthusiasts. Motorola logo obviously. Here is our 8 megapixel camera, LED flash, and speaker. But neat looking back and it's got some curves going on so it's not just a boring flat surface. It's got a very nice industrial design on it, and as we hold it towards the light, you can see the pattern a bit more on the phone. And typical for the Razer line, this guy has a nanoprotective coating, makes water bead and roll off. Doesn't mean you can go swimming with it in your pocket exactly, but it's a little bit of peace of mind there. And we have Corning Gorilla Glass on the front, and it feels pretty darn strong. Honestly, I've actually managed to drop it a couple of times, hasn't harmed it a bit. Weighs 5.1 ounces, so it's got some heft to it. Enough heft that it feels good in your hand, but not so heavy that it's going to drag your pants down either. Phone runs Android OS 4.04, ice cream sandwich, and Motorola promises an update to Jelly Bean by year's end. Now that Google owns them, you think that might happen a little sooner rather than later, but they're only committing to by year's end. It runs the usual recent Motorola UI customization, and boy, do we like that a lot. Certainly things have changed since the days of Motoblur. We've got the standard buttons that are on screen here for controlling Android, gone are the capacitive buttons. We've got our quick launch bar here and our multiple home screens. And if you swipe that direction, neat thing is you can get to all of your key settings right here and then go to all settings if you want to. So I find that a really convenient way to get to your wireless radio control, brightness, ringtone. And then here you can choose what kind of home screen you want to add. Something pre-populated with some apps or you can just start with the blank page and then add your own widgets on here. And if you want to get to widgets, this is pretty much sticking to the true spirit of Android itself without too much skinny. We just top over, tap over to there and we can pick our widgets. And many of these are just your standard Android widgets. So we'll pick one of these guys, the Verizon Wireless Data Monitor. That's always handy to have. Plop that right there. Simple as that to do. It's a good looking sharp screen. It's super AMOLED, which means vivid colors, very high contrast. Uh, 
it, it's fairly viewable outdoors. That Gorilla Glass gives it a little bit of glare, but not too bad. No complaints here. And the text looks fairly sharp to my eyes. And for our app drawer, the fact that the icons are a little squared off, that's that Motorola visual touch, shall we say. You can see what we've got here. Standard selection of Android applications. We've got some Verizon add-ons as well. We've got emergency alerts on here. My Verizon Mobile. The mobile hotspot feature, because the phone can act as a mobile hotspot for your tablet, laptop, what have you. Verizon Messenger application. Voicemail, VZ Navigator. Vcast Tones, Verizon Video, the usual smattering of stuff. And here with the little star, you can add whatever you want to favorites. You just do the add remove thing, and so if you have your favorite apps, you can segregate them. I like that. I find that even more useful than phones that uh, separate the downloads versus all apps kind of thing, because after all, you've downloaded 50 applications. Great. You still can't find anything, but you know the apps that you like the most, so you just assign them to your little favorites tab right there. Pretty handy stuff. Phone has Motorola Smart Actions, pretty much universally loved, and We'll show you that. Starts out with a little multimedia demo here. Just go straight to get started. So you can choose different profiles with different settings for driving, for working out. And you can do things like change your volume, change your ringtone, uh, set it to be quiet at night when you sleep. And for example, if we take a look at the workout smart action, you can see here that it's optimized for having headphones plugged in and it's going to launch the music player automatically. Now you can customize all these and create your own, so nice handy stuff. Phone also comes with Quick Office and you can use this to view, edit, and create MS Office documents. You can see Word, Quick, PowerPoint, Excel spreadsheets, PDFs right here. And if you want to create a new document, you just pick Word, say, and then you create a new document. And then you can choose your format for compatibility. The Razer HD has LTE 4G on Verizon, and this is also a world phone. That means that it has GSM for voice and HSPA for data, 3G data overseas. Uh, it's not going to work here in this country. It's locked so that you can only use it on overseas, but it's very handy for world travelers. So we've used the paperclip to pop out the little door, and here's the piece right here. And you can see that there's a SIM card carrier built in for the micro SIM. So that means every time you open that door, just to access the micro SD card slot right here, you're going to be pulling the SIM out of the phone, so you're basically going to have to reboot the phone. Or let it try to find the network again after you've rudely pulled the SIM card out and put it back in again. And now we popped our card back in and waited 90 seconds for it to actually find the network again. So either way, it's going to take you some time. You can either reboot the phone and wait about a minute for it to boot up, or 30 seconds really, or you can do it this way and wait for it to find the network again. Phone also has dual band Wi-Fi, 811BGN, Bluetooth 4.0 LE. The usual GPS also has GLONASS for improved GPS accuracy, NFC, and front video chat camera, and the back 8 megapixel camera that can shoot 1080p video has HDR. Definitely a step up for Motorola cameras, and we're going to cover the camera soon. The phone has 16 gigs of internal storage. Again, you got that micro SD card slot underneath this funny little door right here to expand storage if you want. Uh, about 12 gigs of that are available for your use of the internal storage. You have a gig of RAM on the phone and again 1.5 gigahertz Qualcomm S4 dual core CPU that benchmarks just as you would expect. It benchmarks just like pretty much every other high-end phone on the US market with that CPU. Quadra, we got a score of 50-55 on 2.2 it was 67.60. GL benchmark 2.5, the Egypt 2.1 classic test was 51 frames per second and 28 for the off-screen portion of that test. Again, pretty much comparable to every other phone on the market. And for Sun Spider, we scored 18.62, which is okay. About average for the pack. Nothing, wow, super duper impressive like the LG Optimus G or the iPhone 5. On browser market, did quite well. It scored 1,007. So certainly a fast phone. It, when quad-core phones come out in this country, you might feel a little bit left behind, but that's always the case with technology, folks. This is a nice, fast phone. And since we haven't heard about a whole bevy of quad-cores being announced for the U.S. market, I wouldn't obsess on that just much. And for those of you who are pretty much set on the Droid Razor phone, but you're not sure which one, in terms of size, if you're thinking about the Razor M also, you can see the size difference right here. Four-inch display on the Razor M definitely is smaller, more pocketable, easier on the hand, so it depends on what you want also in terms of size of the phone. On the back we've got that nice Kevlar look going either way, but more high quality materials, more expensive looks certainly on the 
Razor HD with a metal ring around the edges. Phone dialer here, nice modern minimalism. Can't help but have huge buttons on this very large display. It's certainly easy to use. And when you're in a phone call, this is what the dialer looks like, and you have quick access to the dial pad, the speaker, the mute button, or to add another call in for call conferencing. And there's your hang up button. Call quality on the phone, excellent. Motorola generally does a good job with voice quality, and boy, this phone sounds nice. Full, rich, good volume on both ends, very clear calls. Good going definitely on this phone, Motorola. Data speeds on the phone have been quite good too. I want to show you our speed test results. And here we're running a speed test live right now so you can see it. And the phone is doing typically what Verizon LTE phones do in the Dallas Metroplex, in our area of the Dallas Metroplex, which is to give us somewhere between 10 and 18 megabit per second down and 3 to 8 megabit per second up. Getting a little slow on the upload this time. And here you can see the range of test results that we've gotten in the last two days with the phone. Upload speeds have not been particularly high, but that's right now an issue that's just going on in our area. All of our phones are doing just about the same thing. So respectable speeds overall. The phone has a 2350 milliamp per hour battery lithium ion that is sealed inside. As you notice, there's no way of taking this back off. It is sealed just like the last Razer phone. And battery life has been quite good so far for us. We made it through the day pretty easily with moderate to a little bit heavier use than I would call moderate, generally speaking playing some videos, listening to some music, making phone calls, browsing the web, push email, turned on, going from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. at night. We still had 10% charge, using it moderately aggressively. Now, if you're really a heavy, heavy user, you spend a lot of time streaming video, you use the GPS a lot, then you might want to consider either the Razer Max HD or an external battery pack for this guy. But so far, battery life definitely improved, and certainly over Verizon's early LTE phones. Qualcomm S4 chip is just well optimized with Qualcomm's LTE 4G radio for good performance. The phone ships with a Chrome web browser a little ahead of its time with Jelly Bean. We're just going to get Chrome and the old internet web browser is going to be gone. And you can see we're in the browser now and this is what the on-screen keyboard looks like. Pretty much a no frills affair. We do have press and hold to get to numbers. Other than that, pretty basic keyboard. And we're going to test out how it loads and performs. Visit our own site, Mobile Tech Review. And this is over Verizon's 4G LTE network. Good speeds there, good loading times. Fairly f smooth scrolling there. Pinch zoom, very smooth. Nice sharp screen, I have no problem at all with those fonts. Can't say I can see any pixels there. And for video, we have HTML5 video playback support on this. No more Adobe Flash player preloaded on smartphones these days because Adobe has stopped development for mobile Flash. Those of you who are truly desperate to have it can go to Adobe's website and download it and then go into settings on the phone, turn on loading of non-market applications, and then use a file manager to open up the installer and install Flash. So we'll check out a video review on this. We'll look at the... LG Optimus G video review. Oh, the speaker. And we're only about three quarters of the way up. Very smooth, very good control, good playback, nice speakerphone. Now we're in the camera application, you can see here it's suggesting already that we switch to HDR mode because yes we have HDR mode. We also have self timer, panorama, and multi shot, and we'll use that HDR. I find that it does certainly make for a brighter shot, but not always a sharper shot. And you can point to focus, and hit the shutter button. A little bit of a delay there when you're doing HDR, but not too bad actually. We go back to single shot.
a little bit quicker there. And we've got a palette of settings here. All sorts of effects. Scene modes. Usual exposure. Flash control. So that's what we've got for still shots and obviously everything that we take shows up in gallery right there. If we want to switch to video mode, simply tap there. And we're at full 1080p resolution right here. No scene settings available on this one for effects rather. We have audio including concert and wind reduction which is interesting. Normal videos, MMS, brightness, you get the idea. And we can shoot a video, and I find that video is actually a little bit sharper than photos. Photos in good light look pretty good on this. If you're indoor and mediocre lighting, even if you're using the flash, not so good. And we've got the little button here so you can take photos while you're shooting video. Works just fine, quite quick. Video on this looks pretty well exposed, nice colors, pretty smooth frame rates on it as well. Photo is definitely an improvement over last gen Motorola cameras, but still a little bit noisier than I'd like to see. Not horrible though, pretty decent 8 megapixel camera here. And then we're going to test video playback. This is a 1080p MPEG-4 high profile trailer that we're playing. Obviously that's higher than the resolution of the display itself. But if you're going to use that nice HDMI output, then it's a nice thing to have. Again, really amazing speaker on this. And a nice looking screen. Sharp, colorful, great contrast. Our therapy enables the brain to repair itself. We call it the cure. So certainly a good multimedia device, and you can do Netflix on this, you can do Verizon video, all sorts of things to keep you busy when you don't feel like working or calling. We've also got two games bundled, and wow, for a change it's not Let's Golf. We've got Real Racing 2 here and Modern Combat 3. We're going to check out how it plays. So right now we're in the cutscene for Modern Combat 3 and here you get a playable demo plus multiplayer preloaded on the smartphone. Oh, we've got them all. Nice graphics, nice screen. Powerful smartphone, good combination. 4.7 inch screen, very nice for gaming. So that's the Motorola Droid Razer HD, available soon on Verizon Wireless, $199. Definitely one of the nicest phones you can get on Verizon. The only thing you can do better with is battery life, and then there's the Droid Razer Max HD for $100 more if you want a whole lot more battery power. At any rate, definitely a phone I'd recommend. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.